The Commonwealth of Massachusetts began a program in 2016 to help public school districts sample their drinking water taps and water fountains for lead and copper. While water supplied to schools is generally well below the Massachusetts lead and copper action levels, plumbing and fixtures in buildings may contain lead and copper, causing increased lead and copper in tap water. By sampling these sources, we can identify any results that show such contamination over the action level. MassDEP has partnered with UMass Amherst to implement this program. To date, 169 municipalities have asked to participate in this program, seeking to conduct sampling at 951 school buildings. If you are a technical service provider or MassDEP staff, watch this presentation to learn the procedures for collecting these samples at schools. We will cover the general program as well as instruct you on how to take samples. The school districts start the process by providing basic information to us such as the maintenance checklist, maps of taps sampled, and plumbing profiles. In some cases, school districts are also able to go out and take the samples themselves. In other cases, we will go out there to provide sampling assistance. In a few cases, the school districts may only be able to provide a custodian to unlock and relock the doors, and we will take all the samples. Some rooms, such as the nurse's office, will also need to be unlocked to allow us access. The school drinking water sampling program is a completely voluntary program. There is no regulation or law requiring a school district to sample its school drinking water taps for lead or copper. Only the public water supplier who supplies the water to the school building is regulated by MassDEP to sample a certain number of taps in their supply area under the Safe Drinking Water Act, lead and copper rule. We recommend that schools do sampling every three years. Schools that have to ask for inclusion in this program are first contacted by the UMass Amherst technical service providers to set up an informational meeting. The schools will then complete a maintenance checklist and prepare a sampling plan. The sampling plan will include a map of the school, identifying the location and type of drinking water taps. The sample plan is then entered into an online MassDEP reporting tool by the technical service providers or MassDEP staff. This reporting tool can generate bottle labels and a chain of custody form. The UMass Technical Service Providers will identify the labs a school can use. Various labs around the state have contracts for this work. School districts in MWRA service areas may have their samples processed at the MWRA lab. The lab will supply the bottles for the sampling. Sampling determines the concentrations of lead and copper in water taps during normal use. This includes all taps used for drinking or food preparation. Results from the primary sample can indicate whether there is lead or lead solder in the fixture or the pipe immediately connected to the fixture. The flush sample can indicate whether there is lead or lead solder in the school's plumbing. Sample early in the morning, Tuesdays through Fridays, or during the day on Saturday in order to test the water that was stagnant in the pipes overnight. Then collect a flush sample after letting the water run for 30 seconds. The taps need to be inactive for a period of 8 to 18 hours, so do not sample after weekends or holidays because the water has been stagnant for too long and does not represent typical use. Sample before anyone enters the building and uses water, early in the morning on a weekday before students arrive, or on Saturday, as long as the school is not in use. The school will provide a map of each floor with a unique number assigned to each drinking water tap. In some cases, there will be both a faucet and a water fountain at the same sink in a classroom. Each of these fixtures will require their own unique number. You will need the map as well as the list of sampling locations on the chain of custody form. The numbers of the fixtures on the map should match the numbers for the fixtures on the chain of custody form. If they don't exactly match, use the number on the chain of custody form. In addition to a location code, Identify each fixture by type and provide it a location name. The location name should include as much detail as possible to make it easy to identify a fixture, such as a water fountain outside of classroom number 17. This is the list of location types that can be assigned to each sampling location. There are two types of water fountains, ones with chiller units and ones without. 
code the ones with chillers WC, and the ones without DW. The next most frequently used code is for a classroom faucet, CF. You do not generally have to sample bathroom faucets. The school should label them with a hand-washing-only sticker. Schools may have a couple dozen or a couple hundred taps to sample. You may sample in one or several teams of two or three. You may want to ask to borrow a cart to transport all your samples through the school. The sampling procedures are the same for every school. The taps need to be inactive for a period between 8 and 18 hours when you arrive to sample them. The sample bottles are 250 milliliter bottles. The first draw sample you will take will be the water that initially comes out of the fixture when you first turn it on in the morning. If the fixture looks broken or turned off, and you want to test it to see if it works, hold a sample bottle under the fixture when you try turning it on so that you don't miss the first draw. You should still sample leaking faucets, but make a note of this on the chain of custody form. After filling the first draw sample bottle, run the water for a 30 second flushing period. Time it with a watch. Then take a flush sample of the next 250 milliliters that comes out of the fixture. The lab will provide the sample bottles, and they may arrive in a cooler with the lab's name on it. Note that drinking water samples for lead and copper do not require refrigeration. If the lab does not provide the cooler, or water-resistant container, you will need to coordinate with the UMass contact to get one. Recommended containers are coolers and strong plastic tubs or milk crates. Plastic bags tend to rip and never use cardboard boxes. The items you will need are the bottles, a clipboard, a pen, a timer, a map, a chain of custody form printed out for that school, and the bottle labels, also printed out for that school. The labels come pre-printed with the name of the school and the organization code. You must complete the rest while sampling. There are two methods for doing the labels. Method 1. Write the location code and P for primary, or F for flush, on the caps so that you don't mix up the bottles. Then, one team member can complete the labels, while the other team member fills the bottles at the fixture. Finally, affix the labels to fully dry bottles. Method 2. Prefix all the labels to the bottles before starting the sampling. Stand in front of a fixture before you enter the location codes on the labels. If you fill them out in advance, you will have to look through a hundred bottles trying to find that particular location code. While standing at the fixture, complete the label on the bottle, then take the sample. Each tap will typically require two bottles, a preliminary sample and a flush sample. The sample codes will be three numerical digits and P for primary and F for flush. For example, 001P and 001F for the two sample bottles for location 001. In this example, the labels were affixed after filling the bottles. The sampler put the location code on the top of each bottle and then collected the sample and recorded the time on the chain of custody form. After flushing the tap for 30 seconds, the sampler collected the flush sample and recorded the time on the chain of custody form. Finally, the sampler filled out the labels entirely and affixed them to the bottle with the corresponding location code cap. One team member should be in charge of filling the bottles, and one team member should be in charge of filling out the chain of custody form and sample times. While most fixtures require one primary sample and one flush sample, some taps share a common water pipe that splits right before the fixture. Therefore, each tap will have its own location code. Both taps will require a primary sample, but you only need one flush sample. The chain of custody form will list two samples for one fixture, such as 007P and 007F, but only one sample for the second fixture, such as 008P, requiring three sample bottles. Taps located in the school kitchen used for food preparation, require primary and flush samples. This includes ice machines. Sinks labeled hand washing only do not. Water coolers and faucets are the most common taps to be sampled. Some taps in a school are not used for drinking water. You don't need to sample them. The UMass TA providers have hand washing only stickers available to the schools to post over bathroom faucets if necessary. 
This is an example of a sampling label. The location code is the three-digit code listed on the chain of custody form and map. Please add and circle the P for primary or F for flush sample after the three-digit code so that the lab knows why there are two samples for that location. The date can be pre-entered on the labels, but you will also need to add the exact time of the sampling. The sampler's name needs to be entered, but their initials will suffice, as long as their full name is spelled out on the chain of custody form. The chain of custody form identifies the samples taken and tracks the possession of the filled bottles transferred from person to person. This ensures the integrity of the data. You will be provided with a pre-printed chain of custody form with the name of the school, the organization code, the location codes, and the location names of the samples. The location codes on the chain of custody form must match the location codes on the bottles. The form will be completed during sampling and handed off to the lab with the samples. This is an example of a chain of custody form pre-filled with the school information and location codes. Here is the top half. Here is the bottom half. Pause this presentation here to peruse it more closely. This is an example of a completed chain of custody form. You can see that the information at the top came pre-printed. You entered the name of the sampler or samplers, and they initial their names. At the bottom of the form are the pre-filled location codes and names. If a fixture is out of service, do not turn it on to sample it. Cross off the location name and make a note that it is out of service. Enter the first draw or flush codes P or F and the flush time. The flush time should always be 30 seconds for our program. The sampler initials each row. There is flexibility in completing the chain of custody form. If you find numerous locations that are not listed on the form, you can add them. If you need to add an additional chain of custody form, take a blank form and complete it. You will need to add new location codes and location times and add the next sequential number. If your list of pre-filled sample location codes ends at 070F, the next two samples are 071P and 071F. A location and pickup time needs to be prearranged with the lab. Some labs will not pick up samples. This requires coordination of sample delivery to the lab by the sample team, school staff, or municipal public water supplier. Deliver samples within 14 days of sampling. Hand them off with the chain of custody forms to the courier. Sometimes, things don't go as smoothly as we would like, so bring extra blank chain of custody forms, blank labels, hand-washing only signs, or advise the custodian to obtain them from UMass. Adding locations at the end of the chain of custody form and adding new sheets to the chain of custody forms is not a problem. If the chain of custody form only lists a primary sample, P, for location, you can add a flush sample for the same location at the bottom of the form cross off any non-functioning or out-of-service fixtures. The UMass technical assistance providers are on call to help you if you have a question as to whether to sample a fixture. The UMass TA providers are also available to answer questions from the school personnel. You will be provided with the phone number where you can reach them. If the school has other questions about follow-up, you should refer them to MassDEP. Their contact information is listed here. After completing the sampling, the labs will analyze the samples for both lead and copper. The labs report the data electronically to MassDEP. When MassDEP receives the results, they immediately review the data, highlight any lead or copper exceedances, and email the results to the main contact person at the school. The Department of Public Health may also email the school with information regarding the health effects of lead and copper. The results will also be made available for school officials to review on the MassDEP online reporting tool. Each school district has a unique PIN number to access their records. If there are any lead or copper exceedances, the school should enter their follow-up actions into the tool. Examples of follow-up actions include shutting off a fixture, replacing a fixture, or implementing a school-wide flushing program. 
This is important because the information will eventually become available to the public. The lead action level is 0.015 milligrams per liter, and the copper action level is 1.3 milligrams per liter. Most exposure to lead in young children is from paint and soil, but drinking water can be a component. Mass DEP personnel who will be doing sampling will be teamed up with a UMass TA provider or another Mass DEP staff person who has already done sampling. In addition to the documents previously covered, contractors will be emailed these two documents. This is an example of the information form provided to contractors, assigning them a school or schools to be sampled. Here is the top half. Here is the bottom half. Pause this presentation here to peruse it more closely. This is a post-sampling fact sheet that can be given to school personnel. To review, this is a list of the documents included in the Contractor Project Document Packet. Items 2 through 5 were previously covered, and items 1 and 6 are specifically issued to contractors. For more information on lead in drinking water, and this assistance program in particular, visit the Mass DEP website at mass.gov slash EEA slash agencies slash Mass DEP and click through the highlighted sections on the following screens. If you have any further questions, please contact us through these phone numbers and email addresses. Thank you.